If world exploration is something important in your game, maybe you're making an adventure game, you definitely want to use this pattern that I will show in this video. The Portal to D is one of the main recipes from the Platform Essentials Cookbook, which is a book that presents 12 design patterns that help you build platforming games with Godot Engine. The Portal to D pattern, or recipe as I like to call it, allows players' character to teleport between discrete world locations. So when I say discrete world locations, I want to communicate this in your position to continuous world locations. So what I mean by that, I think that you will understand better with two examples. Open world games such as Skyrim has have continuous world locations. So you transition between one location and another and you don't even realize that you are entering in new locations. You don't even notice that you are transitioning that you are entering in a new location until the title of the location, the level, the, the map appears on your screen. On the other hand, take take Cuphead for instance. On Cuphead you start and finish a level, you have to select a level, you enter the level, you have a very clear definition on where the level starts, where the level finishes, and when you finish the level, you go back to the level selection interface or menu, and you have to select another level that has no explicit, explicit interconnection with the previous level. So this is what I call a discrete word location, where there is no clear transition between one location and another, there is no clear interconnection between them. In that sense, the Portrait to D fits the role of being this interconnection between locations. So it's ideal to use it when you want to add a layer of depth to your 2D levels. For instance, you can use it to create doors to NPC's houses, and when the players interact with this door, which is a Portrait to D, they'll be teleported to the NPC house and like di uh, have dialogues with the NPCs or find out a mystery thing or an item there. You can also use it to create like cave entrances and when the players interact with this entrance, which will be a portrait to them, they will teleport to the cave, which can be a dungeon. You can also add portrait to this to the beginning and end of a level or a location and allow players to move between locations smoothly using basically just a fade in fade out transition. Uh, there is a saying from, from Scott Rogers, uh, the the game designer that wrote Level Up, that he says that walking is not a mechanic. So if nothing interesting will happen between moving from one location to another, why not just teleport the player there already? This is uh, an useful thing that you can do with Portrait 2D. You can basically add a fade in, fade out transition, implying that something happened between moving to, let's say, from the forest level to the city level, but it's nothing interesting, so players can uh, won't waste their time just walking around to the city. So you can delegate this to, to the player's imagination, you can allow them to imagine how will be the journey that move uh, from moving from the forest level to the city level, but you can focus your resources, especially the artist time, uh, on what actually matters to your game. Notice that using the Portrait 2D may break the game flow if the players were expecting something more smooth or to actually walk through these locations. So if players are expecting something like an open world game and you use the Portrait 2D to teleport them from one location to another, this might be a bad usage of the Portrait 2D, so keep that in mind. Well, that said, let's go to the tutorial part, which is what you will actually come to, right? So, what I will do here is to explain the code, and then I will show how to use the Portrait 2D, right? Here I have the Portrait 2D class, which, as you can see, is an interactive area 2D. So, it extends the interactive area 2D. If you don't know what an interactive area 2D is, at the end of the video, you can watch the interactive area 2D video from this series, which is the previous one. But basically, an interactive area 2D is an area 2D, so it extends area 2D from Guru. That once players inter uh, players also have an interaction area 2D on them, which basically is an area 2D that is on a specific interaction layer. That once they overlap, players can press a button, or maybe they can be passive. That will warn that an interaction area 2D overlapped with them. But usually, we use uh, an interaction button, an interaction action and they will trigger an event. So in this case, in this specific case, we have the teleport in event and the teleport out event. When the player 
when a level starts, the level asks the support to do to teleport an object to, and the object will be teleported to the the global position of this specific port to do. Okay, so players enter a level. The level will ask the port to do to teleport this player where the port the, the port to do is. Teleporting out will make something different. It will ask the scene tree to load a new scene, but it will store some important information on a teleport data singleton because we have to maintain some data between these transitions, namely the next portal name, the target portal name, and if the player can uh, teleport back or not. So if the player can teleport back, they will teleport to the same uh, portal that they come from. And then after that, we change the scene to the next scene that we can pass through uh, in this argument. And when the, the players uh, overlap with this portal TD, uh, the portal data will store the current portal. Uh, it will store this portal TD as the current portal. So let's, let's go uh, to the portal data, to the teleport data to see uh, what else can we do with it. So it is a very, very simple class that mainly just keep information between these levels because when we transition to another level, uh, basically good will erase everything from this scene and load the next scene. So a lot of data will be lost in this process, but we can keep some data by storing it in a singleton or an auto load as uh, we call it here in Godot, which if I'm not mistaken, there are different things we can to go a auto an outload as a singleton or not but let's move on with that so the teleport data node which i just call it teleport extends a node because it's very simple and we have a teleport back flag that we can set true or false we have a current portal which is the portal that the player just interacted with previously and we also have the target portal name which is very important because when we are teleporting, let me, let me open the, the actual portal class here. So this is a portal, an, an area, which currently it doesn't have a collision shape yet, but we can set the next scene here on the inspector in the target portal name, which will be the name of the portal in the next level that the player should appear on. Sounds complicated, right? Let's, let's open the actual level so you can see uh, how this all ends up. But before that, let's open the portal level script, which is something that if you want to use a portal, you want to use this logic on your topmost node on your level scene. Because what it will do is that it will take the teleport data, if uh, if we can teleport back, and it will find the the, the portal in the that has the target portal name. So it will find a child in this target uh, in this current level that has the target portal name. So remember to use always indexed values, not, not indexes, but unique IDs for these portals at least. So you, you don't mess with this logic, okay? And after that, it asks the portal to teleport the player into itself. So it in the, the main portal here. And then when the players enter a, a new port, it will wait for the fade in, fade out to, to happen. And then it will teleport the players out to the next portal level. So let's open the portal level one. And here I have two, two portals, which are the door start and the door go. And you can see that the door start has a target. Let me see. Next scene path, which will be the portal to the, uh, the portal level two, which is the next level. And the target portal name will be the door go. So let's open this level two here the player will be teleported to this scene or to this door right here to this one and the door start will teleport the player to the door go from the other level so basically this is a cycling level right i'm not gonna save it because i don't want to lose uh the toggling of the, <laughs> the canvas layer but if we play this level if I press F, which is my interaction action, I'll be teleported to the the goal, the door goal of the previous level. I can interact with this NPC. I used to be just a pixel without dreams and desires. 
but this was before so this is also interactive era 2d go back to this video that i talked about so you can see uh, how we can create npcs using interactive era 2ds but if i press on this other on this other portrait i'll be teleported to the go uh, door go of the previous level right so this is how the portrait 2d works <laughs> So why does this recipe works? Why does the Porto 2D recipe works? Well, from a design perspective, it saves a lot of time because as I said, you won't have to draw, design and implement a whole part of your world that basically players will just walk through it. As I said, or as Scott Rogers said, walking is not a mechanic. If nothing is important will happen in this part of your game, you can basically just fade in, fade out, and teleport the players between these locations and let the imagination fill the gap. Let they imagine how will be the journey between the forest and the city. But also, from uh, from another point of view, the Portrait 2D adds a multi-layered level exploration because instead of just moving horizontally and vertically in a level, which is a lot, by the way, you can also add a depth to the level because now players will be able to enter houses, enter buildings, enter dungeons and you can also add like crossroads if players like interact with a portrait 2D you can have a wood sign telling that if you move in this direction they will go to city A and if they move in this direction they will go to city B if they move to this direction they will go to forest part 3 for instance so the, the portrait 2D works in a very... It, it basically enriches the world building of your game. But also from an engineering aspect, so from an engineering point of view, the portrait to deal works because we rely on the very scene tree structure from Godot itself. So we use the find node to find where the player will appear in the next scene. We use the change scene method to transition to load the next, uh, the next level. And also we can rely on the single tones or the auto loads to keep and maintain the, the data from the previous level. So we can know where the player will be at the next level and where the player came from the previous level. You can find more about the Portrait 2D and 11 other design patterns or recipes, as I said, in the Platformer Essentials Cookbook. You can grab a copy of the cookbook at pigdev.each.io slash platformer dash essentials. I'll put the link in the description to make it easy for you. So, did you like this kind of content and video format? Leave a thumbs up so people know that this is worth watching. And also subscribe for more. If you have any questions regarding the Platform Essentials cookbook, the portrait to the implementation, maybe you have some doubts regarding the code, leave a comment below. I love when you guys do. But for now, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time. See you there.